Hey, how's it going? Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. I am currently located in Saline Valley, which is in the northern part of Death Valley National Park. If you look behind me, you can see that the mountains here are very desert-like and nothing really grows on them. But Death Valley is very beautiful, geologically speaking, with all the colors of the mountains, and it's a pretty cool place to ride and to camp. <clears throat> I am currently drinking an elixir of the gods, which is a monster pipeline punch. So hopefully this will bring energy to the video today. I wanna to talk to you and give you all of the reasons why you should be riding a small adventure bike. These are the top reasons that I think make it compelling to ride a small adventure bike. So stick around and you'll learn why you should get rid of that middle or heavyweight bike and start riding a small adventure bike. All right, the first thing we need to do is put some parameters on what defines a small adventure bike because there's a lot of different bikes out there and some in the enduro class that could potentially be a small adventure bike and then others in that class that aren't and then there's some that start bordering on middle weight that aren't really small adventure bikes. So I've categorized this into uh, five characteristics that I think applies to a small adventure bike. You may agree or disagree with me. That's fine, but we had to put some sort of parameters on what a small adventure bike is. So the first thing is the small adventure bikes, brand new, need to cost $8,000 or less. Anything more than that kind of gets away from some of the reasons why I think it's good to ride a small adventure bike. The next thing is engine size is 500 cc's and below. When you start getting above that, then you start putting on a lot more horsepower and a lot more weight. So it takes it out of that small category. So speaking of weight, I want to say 400 pounds or less. However, I know that the Honda CB500X is still considered a small adventure bike and it's around 425 pounds. And the Gen 1 and 2 KLRs I think fall in around 425, 430 pounds. So I'll make that the cutoff. So 425, 430 and lower is a small adventure bike. I think it's important for a small adventure bike to be able to carry luggage. So it has to have a subframe that can support luggage and support it for days on end, not just a day ride, but to be able to put your camping gear on there and go out and do extended rides, extended adventures out in the back country. So some of the smaller enduro bikes, they're not really equipped to handle uh, luggage. The final characteristic of a small adventure bike to, to fit in this category is it needs to be able to do um, highway, not interstate, but highway speeds for long periods of time. I'm saying like 65 miles per hour for hours on end so that you can ride from your house to where you wanna go and do it relatively comfortably. Maybe not as, as comfortable as a middle or heavyweight bike that can handle those speeds, but it's capable of doing it if you're willing to put in the hours and the time to get out there where you don't have to trailer your bike or truck your bike somewhere to go do the riding. So those are the parameters that I've put on what constitutes a small adventure bike. Here are some examples of what um, are small adventure bikes. The, since I talked about it before, the Honda CB500X, I think that falls kind of in that category. Definitely the Honda CRF 300 Rally and the, the 250 Rally. You can put luggage on those. They fit in the price and also the weight category. The uh, BMW G310 GS, the Royal Enfield uh, Himalayan, and also what I've got here, the KTM 390 Adventure. Those are just some of the examples of what fits in that category of small adventure bikes. Now, some bikes that don't fit in that category are the Honda CRF uh, 450L. Uh, uh, Cost-wise, it doesn't fit in the category that I've put it in the price. I'm sorry, KLR 650 owners, the new Gen 3 KLR 650 is no longer a small adventure bike. It is a middleweight based strictly on the weight. It's 450 plus pounds and it doesn't fit in the small category. I know some of you may offer the KTM 500 EXC. 
it also doesn't fall in the category that I've put it in because of the cost of that bike to begin with and the modifications you have to make to it in order to get it to be uh, an adventure ready type bike because that's a dirt bike that people are converting to adventure. So you're you're talking ten thousand plus dollars to to get that ready. All right, let's get into the top reasons why I think you should be riding a small adventure bike if you're an adventure rider. I've tried to put these in list of importance where um, the first ones I come to are things to consider, but the last one is, is really the biggest reason why I think you should be riding a small adventure bike or be considering to riding a small adventure bike. So the number five reason that you should be riding a small adventure bike or considering riding a small adventure bike is the entry level cost of the small adventure bikes is so much less than the middle and the heavyweight bikes. With these bikes starting uh, brand new, $8,000 or less, usually between the six to $7,000 mark, it's a lot more affordable to get a new bike. And then the used bike market is certainly way more affordable. You can find those bikes for, for much, much less. And then you can get into riding. You don't need a lot of investment into it and you can get out and get started. And maybe you need to put more money into riding gear or whatever your budget is. It just shrinks the amount of money you spend on a hobby that is already gonna <laughs> absorb a lot of your discretionary income. All right, the, num the number four reason is the smaller adventure bikes typically have a lower seat height, which makes it a lot more approachable to a larger range of people. And I'm not a great rider, and I can tell you I really appreciate having a lower seat height. I was riding a BMW F800 GS that was, I think, 34 and a half inches. I dropped that thing all of the time. And I know that the pro riders out there, the really experienced riders, are going to say it doesn't matter what your seat height is but i can tell you as just an average rider it does matter when i'm getting into really sketchy situations it's nice to be able to put a foot down be able to catch the balance of the bike keep it up and for new riders it gives them a lot of confidence to be able to get their feet down so i think that makes it an important aspect of riding and i'm not trying to go out and win the dakar i'm just trying to go out and have a good time and dropping my bike is not part of that so whatever i can do to be more comfortable out riding, I think is worth it. Um, and then I've had a lot of comments from older riders or older people that are wanting to get back into riding and that is something they're concerned about is seat height. So the small adventure bikes typically have a lower seat height making it much more approachable. And the number three reason to ride a small adventure bike kind of goes back into the budget side of things is that maintenance costs on these bikes are gonna be less. It has less oil volume, so the intervals are almost the same as a bigger bike and I'm not using quite as much oil, so it doesn't cost as much to maintain the bike. The uh, chains and sprockets are typically less expensive than the bigger bikes. Replacement parts are less expensive. Aftermarket parts are less expensive. And tires on these bikes, especially the rear tires on small adventure bikes, are really inexpensive. The rear tires on this bike, the KTM 390 Adventure, are half the cost of tires on the BMW R1200 GS. I have a Metzler Carew 3 on here that I paid $99 for. That same tire on an R1200 GS or 1250 GS is a $220 tire. So over a long period of time, the economics of riding a smaller bike really comes into play. So the money I save for maintenance and tires I can use for maybe upgrading my riding gear, my camping gear. There's other ways to use that. So I think the maintenance costs on these bikes make it uh, much more approachable and also worth riding the small adventure bike. The number two reason to ride a small adventure bike is the weight. That low weight on this bike is, it's just remarkable how much more confidence you can have riding, how much easier it is to ride, especially doing slow speed maneuvers like in parking lots or in a little bit more technical terrain, it's a little bit easier to balance the bike. If you have to lean it one way or another, it's not, you're not as concerned about it tipping over. And you can catch it a little easier uh, as well. And then in the event you do drop the bike, it's a lot easier to pick up because it is so much lighter. And overall, having a lighter bike, the only time that you may, it may be a downside is in heavy, heavy winds. That's the only time I've ever had any issues with this being a lighter bike. I get blown around a little bit more than I would on a bigger bike, but that is maybe five to 10% of the riding. So I will take the lighter weight over the heavier weight 
any day and it does make a difference. So if you are riding a middle or heavyweight bike, I encourage you to go give a, a lighter bike a try, go spend a weekend on it and you will come back thinking, wow, this is really amazing. All right, the number one reason to ride a small adventure bike, wait for it. They are dang fun to ride, dang fun. It's nice to be on something small and get my feet down. It's lightweight, it doesn't have a crazy amount of power. I don't have to worry about it jumping out from underneath me. I can load everything I need up on it and it's, it's just fun, it fits me really well. And for riders getting back into it, it's very approachable. Um, they're just really fun bikes to ride. If you have not ridden a small adventure bike, that's equipped and set up for doing a solo weekend type trips, I really encourage you find someone that has a small bike and if, if they will, borrow it for the weekend. Just go out or maybe trade bikes for the weekend. Let them ride your big heavy bike and you ride their lighter bike and just try it because you will not regret that experience. The stress that comes with riding the bigger heavy bikes for those of us that are just mediocre riders and always worried about dropping the bike or maybe not being able to pick it up if you do ride, that goes away riding the small bikes. They are so much fun. I cannot get enough of riding this bike in all kinds of terrain. Whether it be off-road, I even like going long distance on this bike. It is that much fun to ride. So my number one reason to ride a small adventure bike, they are fun. Hey, I just wanted to mention real quick, if the type of riding you like to do is riding the backcountry discovery routes, these small adventure bikes are absolutely perfect for doing that. About the only kind of riding on the backcountry discovery routes they're not suitable for are the expert sections. And quite frankly, most of us riders don't have the skill set to ride those expert sections. And the guys, the, the riders that can do that, well, they could ride about any bike and it wouldn't matter. So riding the small adventure bikes on the backcountry discovery route is a blast um, it has been so much fun and it's such so much less stressful i can tell you from riding an r1200 gs on backcountry discovery routes compared to the 390 adventure on that gs every time the the front wheel would give a wobble man my heart would jump up into my throat and I'd be thinking, okay, this is it. With this bike, it does it. I'm just like, oh, I can continue to go and not be too stressed about it. So, yeah, if you think these aren't capable of it, they really are. And I think it's a great way to go. Those are my five top reasons why you should be riding a small adventure bike. They are just fantastic little bikes all the way around from the, the cost, the maintenance costs, the weight of them. Um, just the overall experience of riding these bikes is fantastic. You cannot go wrong. So if you're looking to make a change, maybe you don't ride a lot because your bigger bike intimidates you, get a small one. You won't regret it, you'll ride all the time. Thanks for watching. Get out, do some riding, borrow a small adventure bike if you don't have one, or go get yourself a small adventure bike if you don't have one. Ride safe when you're out there, and I will see you out there.